This is Yar, the Pirate's Guide to R. We're in Chapter 5 now. Um, don't know why I'm talking like that. I'll, well, I can't promise I won't go into other voices, but I'll, I'll try to avoid it. So, uh, yeah, today we're talking about Chapter 5 on matrices and data frames. So, so far we've uh, mostly been dealing with uh, scalars and vectors, but now we're going to move on to more, um, yeah, more useful objects for storing large data sets. So just to show you what that looks like, I'll just copy and paste this code from the book. And you, as you can see that uh, so far we've had two objects, scalars and vectors. And scalars are just non-dimensional objects. It's just one number, one string, um, one character. Vectors are um, one-dimensional objects. So for example, one to 10, oops, one to 10. That's a vector of length 10 and there's 10 elements. Uh, but matrices and data frames are two-dimensional elements, so they have both um, number of rows and a number of, or a number of rows here and a number of columns uh, here. So as you can see, a matrix or a data frame looks a lot like a spreadsheet in Excel or a data file in shitty pieces of shitty shit. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So there's many different ways of creating uh, matrices and data frames in R. Uh, one of the easiest ways is to use this um, cbind or rbind command. And this is for creating uh, matrices uh, from existing vectors. So for example, let's say we had two vectors, A and B. So A is 1 to 10, B is, I don't know, 21 to 30. And let's say we want to put both of these vectors into a matrix. So we can just say cbind a, b. Oops, I haven't run these two codes yet. And what cbind does is, is it combines two vectors by columns. So that's where the c comes from. So yeah, column bind, you can think of it. So a goes into the first column, b goes into the next column. And if you want to combine them uh, as rows instead, you just use rbind. So R bind A, B, now A is in the first row of the matrix, and B is in the second row of the matrix. Um, so that's one way to create matrices. You can also do it using just the matrix command in R. And if we look at the help menu for matrix, uh, we see that it has a number of arguments. Um, the key ones are data, so this you would enter as a typically as a vector of data, and this would be the vector that will contain all of the data in the matrix. And then using these n row and n call arguments, you can define how many rows and how many columns should be in the matrix. So let's call um, let's call matrix or a mat. I'll just call the first matrix a dot mat, and we'll make this a matrix. And let's set the data to be the numbers from 1 to 30. And let's say there should be 10 rows and 3 columns. Uh, let's run this. Now if I look at a.mat, we see that um, the matrix function has created a matrix with, again, 3 columns, like we said, 10 rows. And the elements are the numbers from 1 to 30. Now you might ask, what happens if we don't have enough data in the uh, vector to fill the matrix. To be honest, I don't even know the answer to that question, so let's just try it. So yeah, we get an error. So if you try to enter a data vector that um, doesn't fill the matrix, then you'll get an error. Um, but I do think that if you put a smaller number, so let's just say 1 to 10, I think now, yeah, so R will just repeat the data in the vector until you fill the matrix. But as a general rule, just so you know exactly what's going on, it's best to put in um, a vector whose length is equal to the number of rows times the number of columns, which in this case is 30. So as you can see, this result is pretty much the exact same as saying cbind of uh, this vector, this vector, and this vector. Um, there's one other optional argument to uh, the matrix function, which is by row. And this is a logical argument that will change how R fills in this matrix. So right now it's filling it by columns. So it's putting the first number in the first row, first column, and then it's going down by columns. But if you want it instead to go one, two, three, four, five, six by row, 
just add the by row equals true command. And now you see that it's filling it um, by row. So uh, these, I think, are the most uh, common um, functions for creating matrices. But what about data frames? Um, well, before we talk about that, what's the difference between a ma uh, data frame and a matrix? So a matrix can only contain numbers or it can only contain um, characters. You can't contain, for example, one column of numbers and then one column of characters. Uh, matrices don't work like that. They're very simple. But in data frames, you can create columns that have very different types of data. So for that reason, most of the time, most of the data sets that you'll be using will be in data frames, not in matrices. And the way to create a data frame is by using the data.frame function. And the way to use it, it's really quite simple. So let's say we want to create a data frame of survey data. So we'll say survey, and you say data.frame. And now we can just enter in the columns in the data frame. So the first thing you do is you enter in um, the name of the column, first column. So let's say this will be the person's uh, initials. So I'll just say initials equals, and then you put in a vector of whatever the data you want. So let's just put in these people's initials, P and P. And if you just include one argument like this, let's run this, then you see that we just have one column in the data frame. But you can keep adding as many as you want. So now let me say gender of these people is female, male, female, male, male. And we can have the people's height is, I don't know, 132, 150, 167, 148, 172. For all my American friends out there, yes, those are in centimeters. And yes, I had to Google how to transform uh, heights I know into centimeters. But for all you European friends of mine, hopefully this uh, these are somewhat reasonable and I haven't included too many giants or tiny uh, people in there. Okay, um, and you can keep adding any data you want. Um, I don't know, weight, um, gosh, kilograms. Uh, hmm. I don't know what's reasonable. 50, 12, that's probably a bit small. Maybe a bit big, I don't know. Ah, sure, 1250, why not? And if we look at the results here, uh, we see that we now have all four of these columns in our data frame. And let me make sure that I run all of this. So now we have a data frame called survey that's stored in our working space. Now anytime I want to see it, I can just type survey and there's our results. Um, <clears throat> one additional argument I always put in when creating data frames is this strings as factors equals false. Um, what that means is in R there's really two ways of storing character data like initials and gender. R can either store them just as strings, or it can convert them <clears throat> to a format called factors, um, which uh, I'm not going to talk about yet, but factors can be a bit confusing if you're not prepared for them. I almost never use them, so I always say strings as factors equals false. Okay, so that's how you can easily create your own data frames um, by typing them by hand in R. But R actually has a lot of data frames already stored um, within yeah the software that you can look at and if you just search for is it data yeah so um, no that's not what I want I want maybe it's data sets yeah here we go so <clears throat> this is the base R data sets this package contains a variety of data sets for a complete list use library help equals data sets okay so if I run that, I see all of these different um, data sets that are stored in R. Now a lot of these will be um, data frames, some will be matrices, some will actually even just be vectors. But let's look at a couple that I've already looked at and I know are data frames. So for example, this chick weight. This is the weight versus age of chickens on different diets. Okay, let's look at the helper chick weight. And here we see the description, the chick weight data frame has 578 rows, four columns for an experiment on the effect of diet on the early growth of chicks. And you can see the columns we have in here. So let's go ahead and look at this. 
And here's a function we'll, I'll teach you in a minute. So that's the view function, <clears throat> which will um, bring up the entire data frame into a new window. So if I say view chick weight, we see all the elements in, um, in this data frame. So you see we have weight, time, chick, and diet. OK. Um, now there's a lot of functions that you'll find useful when managing data frames. So usually when, I, when you load a data frame in Dara, the first thing at least I like to do is take a quick look at it. As long as it's not too large of a data set um, and I can yeah, visually look at it, then I like to do that. So the head <clears throat> and tail command are helpful for this. So if I look at the head of chick weight, this will show me the first few rows. Oops, head, not H-E-A. This will show me the first few rows of the data frame and put it into the console. Now, you might wonder what happens if I just write chick weight. Well, if I do that, it's going to print the entire data frame, which for one thing, it hides the column names, which usually I want to look at. So I almost never type the entire data frame name. I always use head to look at it. OK, now I can see the names. I can see generally what the data look like. If you want to see the last few rows of a data frame, you can use the tail function. So tail chick weight. And here's the last few rows at the end of the data frame. Um, another one that we just used was the view command. So this will print the entire data frame, but instead of printing it into the console, it will bring up a new window for you to look at it. So we've just done that, but let's do it again. And again, we see this new window with all of chick weight. Important thing to keep in mind is use a capital V here. If you use an undercase V, then as long as I know how to spell that, can't spell chick weight, then it says I don't know the function view, which you might think, oh, what's wrong with you, R? You know view, but uh, nope, R is very finicky. It needs you to capitalize things correctly. So make sure you capitalize the letter, not the first letter. So these functions will give you a quick look at a data frame or a matrix. Um, you can use all of these functions also on matrices. Um, if you want to know about the dimensions of a data frame or a matrix, then there's a few functions you can use. Um, so dim and row and and call will give you the dimensions. So if I just say dim of chick weight, then I get a vector, which the first element is the number of rows. So there's 578 rows, and four is the number of columns. So those are the four columns. And then as we saw from using the tail command, the last row number was 578. Now, if you just want the number of rows, you can just type in row, or in call, we'll give you the number of columns. Um, it's just whatever you want. Um, if you want to know the names of the columns, in a data frame, then you want to use the names command. So I have to say names chick weight. Then I see uh, I get a vector as the result, and it's a character vector of the four names of the columns. Um, there's another couple of helpful functions for getting an overall um, overview. Overall overview, that's not repetitious um, of a data frame, not a data form. Um, and for example, summary. So let's look at summary of chick weight. And as you can see, what this does is it'll give you summary statistics on each of the columns. So what R will do is it looks at the first column, weight, and it says it's numeric. So it gives us the median, mean, min, max, all that good stuff. Also for time. Now when it gets to the chick data, it realizes that, um, or I think in this case it's a factor, so it's not treating it like a number. Don't worry about that. And then diet, it says, well, there's only four values here, so instead of calculating summary statistics, let me just give you the frequencies of each. So these are the frequencies. <clears throat> um, another function you can use is the structure function, str. And this also gives you, uh, it doesn't look so nice here. Um, let's try this again. Yeah, it still doesn't look so nice, but sometimes this can give you information that's helpful as well. So here we see that the first column is weight, it's numeric, here's the first yeah, few examples of it, time, it's numeric, here's the first few examples, and other information. Okay, 
Um, so that's how to get a basic overview of a data frame that you've already got into R. But how can you actually load data into R from other files? Um, so for example, let's say you have a data set that's in um, a text file and you want to load that into R. So the main function to do that is read.table. And as you can see from the read.table help function, there's really a number of different arguments. Um, I won't go through all of these right now. Um, you can look through the arguments here and look at the examples, but I'll just give you a brief example of how to use it. So I've got a data set um, stored online called pirates.txt, and the link for that is, um, uh, let's see, where is that? That's http colon slash slash nathanieldphillips.com p content uploads uh, 2015 11 pirates1.txt so this um, this file is stored online and with the read.table command you can easily read in data that's stored online so I'm going to call this data pirate.survey and I say read.table and the first argument is file, and that's where you need to specify exactly where the file is located. If it's on your computer, then you can just enter in the file path name of the data on your computer, or if it's in a web link, you can just include the web link. So I'll just copy this. Okay, so file is the first argument, then header. This um, argument tells R whether or not there's a header file, or a, a header column, row, sorry, in the data frame, so I say it's true. Then you need to define how it's separated. So sep, um, if it's comma separated, you can say comma, oops, like a comma. If it's tab separated, like this file is, then you use uh, backslash t. And then finally, I always include strings as factors equals false. Now if I run this, hopefully it works. So far, so good. And you can see that now we have Pirate Survey, which has a thousand observations and 14 variables stored into R. If you're not online, this of course won't work. Um, you can just replace the file with the location of the file on your computer. So now if I look at Head of Pirate Survey, I can see the first few rows of these data. Um, now I also have this, maybe just to give you an example of how um, you can find data on your computer, you can also use this import data set um, GUI within R. Just, it's helpful if you don't know exactly where a file is located on your computer. So let's try to find this on my computer. So I have, you can say import data set from text file or web URL, let's say from text file, and I want the pirates.txt function or data and there it is on my computer so here's the file path but now that I found it I could just double click this and you get this little GUI that opens up so this will be the name of the um, object when you store it in R there's a bunch of things like encoding automatic sure is there a header yep um, row names I don't know automatic how is it separated in this case R sees that it's tab so that's the default you can change um, what decimal points are, if it's, um, if it's like an American system, then period is decimal point, if it's a European, then comma. Um, and that looks good, so I'll just say import. And as you can see, R has now produced um, this code, read.delim. Read.delim is just another function for reading in tab delimited files, and it's included the um, file path. And then it's automatically saying, uh, to, to view it. Um, so that function can be helpful in figuring out where files are located on your computer. If you do use it, I would always recommend copying the code that R produces from the import command and putting it into your, um, into your source file. That way later on when you have a bunch of code that you want to rerun later, you don't need to go through the menu again. You can just run this line. And now I can say head pirates and there's the result. Okay, so that's the basics of uh, matrices and data frames and um, 
reading and files from your computer.